Um, next up, we have Anglo Gold Ashanti. Um, we've got Senior Vice President Michael Erickson, who's going to run through um, the story in Australia. Um, Mike was appointed. Um, senior VP in 2014 and been at the company for 20 years, looking at these numbers. Um, he's accountable for all of the Australian operations which encompass Sunrise Dam and Tropicana. Thanks very much, Tim. And thanks very much to the organisers of uh, Diggers and Dealers for the opportunity to present again this year. Uh, before I start, I'll just draw your attention to this disclaimer. If you want to read it in detail, it's um, the, the presentation uh, will, is uh, on the um, Anglo Gold uh, website. <clears throat> Today, I'm going to give an update on Anglo Gold Ashanti's strategy under what is essentially a, um, a new leadership team at the executive level. Then I'll talk about how that plays out in our Australian operations uh, and drives our ESG focus. <clears throat> Last September, Alberto Calderon became uh, CEO of the company and we gained three new XCOM uh, members in Marcelo Godoy, the Chief Technology uh, Officer, Terry Briggs, the Chief Development Officer, both ex-Newmont, uh, and Lisa Alley, the Chief People Officer, who was previously with um, Newcrest and, and BP. We will soon be announcing a new CFO, a Chief Financial Officer, uh, following the retirement of uh, Christine Ramon at the end of, um, of June. Our overall objective remains to safely and responsibly deliver better quality production. Whilst uh, COVID has dominated the global landscape for the last two years, it doesn't change our approach. We'll continue to navigate the impacts of the pandemic and the increasing challenge of global inflation by being proactive, adapting where necessary and maintaining a strong balance sheet. That means maintaining discipline in allocating capital during our reinvestment program, which is aimed at increasing mineral invent inventory, extending mine lives, improving operating flexibility, and bringing new lower cost production online. So alongside the new, uh, the renewed leadership team, we've revi we're revitalizing the critical foundations of the business for long-term success. This meant the implementation of a new operating model in the last quarter of 2021, followed by work earlier this year to optimise the organisational design, clarify accountabilities and, and eliminate inefficiencies. We've also introduced a more focused operating culture to, to deliver tangible operating improvements and improve and provide confidence in production and cost guidance. Each initiative is vital in meeting our strategic objectives. At the same time, we're progressing the catalysts to transform performance going forward. Uh, the global business has, has embarked on a full potential review of our asset portfolio. Our belief, that, our belief is that the best way to deliver value for stakeholders is through realising the full potential of our minds and our advanced projects. That's, th that's what's driving the significant program of reinvestment in our operations, as well as investment in the Abwasi project in Ghana and our new gold project in Nevada. ESG is central to our approach, and that begins with safety. We've maintained a strong safety performance and safety culture, with injury rates falling by around 75% over a decade. Our injury rates, driven by a zero harm approach, are now less than half the ICMM member average. We remain focused on major hazards and the critical controls needed to manage the risk of serious harm. Now, in practice, that means that every person on every site knows by heart the three or four things most likely to cause serious harm in their work area and the actions needed to prevent them. Along with our balance sheet, our greatest strength is our world-class asset portfolio and the teams that run our mines. We have a truly diversified asset base, which we're working to make even stronger and more sustainable. We actively manage the portfolio, bringing in new projects and, ex and extending mine lives at our key assets. We're adding to our mineral inventory across the portfolio, including in the, U in the US, where we have recently established a dominant position in an emerging new gold district in southern Nevada. 
and importantly, the ramp up of our tier one asset, Abwasi in Ghana, is well underway. Abwasi remains one of the world's great ore bodies with average grades exceeding 10 grams per tonne over its life, with more than 20 million ounces of mineral resources and 6 million ounces of ore reserves. Production between 2024 and 2028 is anticipated to average 400 to 450,000 ounces per year at an all-in sustaining cost of 900 to 950 US dollars an ounce. We're excited about our project in Nevada, a US state that ranked third in the most attractive mining jurisdictions in the world in the um, Fraser Institute's 2021 annual survey of mining companies, behind Western Australia, incidentally, which ranked uh, number one. Through the, through the acquisition of Corvus late last year, we've consolidated a significant land package in one of the, new, in one of the largest new gold districts in Nevada adding Corvus's North Bullfrog and Motherlode deposits to our silicon discovery where we have declared a mineral resource of 3.4 million ounces. Our land package gives us economies of scale through the integration of infrastructure, including water rights and processing facilities. Our conceptual development plan for the district envisages the North Bullfrog deposit being developed first, with initial heap bleach production anticipated in the next three years. We see this land package yielding more than 300,000 ounces a year for well over a decade at a tier one cost structure. <clears throat> An aggressive drilling campaign has been carried out this year to test extensions to the known mineralisation and permitting for North Bullfrog is expected to start in the second half. So in February this year, we launched the Global Full Asset Potential Program that I mentioned earlier to address operational performance gaps and ensure that our assets are operating as close as possible to their full potential. This program is based on an established methodology and a site-owned and site-led, with support from a cross-functional team of internal specialists and process specialists, headed up by our Chief Te Technology Officer, Marcelo Godoy. The Full Asset Potential Program focuses on step change improvements and covers all aspects of a site's full potential from mine planning and strategy to productivity to fixed cost and external spend. It involves a detailed analysis of each asset and a comparison of cost and performance to benchmarks using a broad range of tools and advanced analytics. The goal of the program is to understand how productive and efficient each site can really be and to chart a path to get there. The full asset potential of each site takes approximately three months and will result in the identification of key areas of performance improvement to be implemented over the following 18 to 24 months. Sunrise Dam, which is the pilot site, and Seguri in Guinea were the first cabs off the rank, followed by Cuiaba in Brazil, and the process has just started at Tropicana. We plan to provide a progress report on the Full Asset Potential Program in our results announcement, announcement which will be released uh, on Friday. I'd now like to talk in more detail about our Australian operations and provide some high level information about the Full Asset Potential Project at Sunrise Dam. So at Sunrise Dam, the opportunities that have been identified sit in the areas of underground production and metallurgical recovery, as well as mine life extension. There's more work to do before we can provide information on the mine life extension opportunities, but in the underground mine, development was, was identified as a key bottleneck and a path to step change underground output over the next two to three years has been identified. We're achieving immediate positive outcomes from initiatives to drive the intensity of development in priority, priority headings and improve spatial compliance. Quick wins, including the change to firing only once every 24 hours, the use of wireless, of wireless debts to reduce the amount of slot development required, and conversion of the underground workshop for jumbo servicing have all been successful in mitigating some of the production losses due to COVID absenteeism and skill shortages. Advanced analytics have been used to identify optimal set points for re reagent addition in the, in the processing plant, and a pilot is now underway, uh, utilising a leach efficiency predictive model and optimizer as well. 
Early results are positive with a pathway to recovery improvements of about 1% um, with, very, very little, uh, with very little capital required. And longer term, there's an opportunity to lift recovery by a further 2 to 3% through a change in the configuration in the leach circuit, along, along with some advanced uh, instrumentation. The past two years have been challenging from an operating perspective with sc severe skill shortage, uh, shortages in COVID-related uh, absenteeism, placing pressure on productivity and mining efficiency. And more recently, uh, inflation has started to bite. This is something affecting the entire mining sector and we don't see these challenges easing for some time. At Sunrise Dam, the labour issues have had the most impact in the underground mine, reducing the tonnes mined in the first half by about 10%. Fortunately, this has been offset by the successful Golden, golden Delicious satellite pit, pit, which reduced the need to feed low-grade stockpile ore. However, on a more positive note, the substantial underground drilling program that's been underway at Sunrise Dam since 2019 has been delivering significant results. The philosophy behind this work, which is reflected at other operations across the group, is that we can add the most value for shareholders by investing in existing assets and realising their full potential. To date, this drilling program has delivered 1.6 million ounces of resource growth and discovered the Frankie ore zone, which accounts for approximately 600,000 ounces of this resource addition. The other benefit of this drilling has been reserve conversion and an overall increase in the confidence level of the resource base, which has enabled multiple cutoff grade and scheduling scenarios to be assessed to, to build a very robust underground mine plan over a five year time horizon. A success story at Sunrise Dam has been the, the, the satellite Golden Delicious Pit, which is located 12 kilometres from the uh, Sunrise Dam processing plant. We started mining the first ore at Golden Delicious on schedule in the second quarter last year. The pit will be mined in two stages and is on track to deliver approximately 136,000 ounces over a three year life. The pit has been performing to plan and providing valuable ore to displace the low grade stockpile material that would otherwise be blended with the underground ore in the processing plant to fill the mill. But that's not the only success story at Golden Delicious. The mining contract for the pit was awarded to Aboriginal mining contractor Carey Mining, which employs 80 people at Golden Delicious, in addition to the 57 Carey employees carrying out the Sunrise Dam or haulage contract. The quality of the Carey work throughout this project has been excellent. I'll talk a little bit more about Carey later in the context, in the context of our social investment in the, in the eastern goldfields. Now I'll move to uh, Tropicana, which remains a key asset in Anglo Gold Ashanti's global portfolio. <clears throat> I, I talked at some length last year uh, about the continuous improvement culture at, Tropic at Tropicana, typified by the optimisation of the processing plant. The final step, the thickener duty swap, was successfully implemented last June, and the processing plant will treat very close to 9.5 million tonnes uh, this year which is an outstanding achievement, particularly when you consider that nameplate throughput at commissioning was 5.5 uh, million tonnes per annum. I also talked last year about the approval of the final stage of the Havana cutback, which will generate a further 32 million tonnes of ore for 1.4 million ounces of gold, extending the mine life from 27 to 2030. Commercial production for the expanded Havana pit is scheduled to be achieved in quarter one 2020. The open pit mine plan is now optimised, providing a stable base to the production profile, allowing various underground opportunities to be, to, uh, to be explored to add to that base. The first underground mine, Boston Shaker, has hit all its key performance targets and is now operating at the 1.4 million tonne uh, per annum annualised uh, rate, which was set in the, uh, the feasibility study. Mineralisation remains uh, open at depth, which Jim showed um, uh, well on his slide uh, a few presentations ago. And the Tropicana underground extension to the south of Boston Shaker will be in production in quarter four, 22. That this is going to lift the underground output to the 1.9 to 2 million tonne uh, per annum rate. Uh, the, the Havana link drive, shown on this slide, 
uh, has just commenced, opening up the next phase of exploration and underground production. The full asset potential program that I'd mentioned earlier kicked off at Tropicana last month and we, along with our joint venture partners, Regis Resources, are looking forward to implementing the initiatives that, is, uh, that are generated. So the mine life at Tropicana has now been extended by more than seven years at annual throughput rates now some 70% higher than originally contemplated during the feasibility and I'm sure there's more to come. This slide shows the huge potential that exists beneath the open pits at Tropicana to the south of Boston Shaker. Uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, and it was shown on, on Jim's slide, the Boston Shaker mineralisation is, uh, is open at depth. This extensive down-dip dimension is a, is a feature of the mineralised system at Tropicana, and it provides the key to unlocking future value. A pre-feasibility study on the deeper Havana mineralisation commenced this quarter. The link drive we touched on, pre on in the previous slide provides the opportunity to explore the system between Tropicana and Havana, uh, as well as um, uh, providing early access to the H Havana underground. Exploration at um, investment at Tropicana is, bro is broadly divided into drill testing the down dip extensions to the mineralised system, as well as exploring the many regional targets that continue to hold significant potential within transport distance to the mill. I'd now like to talk about our approach to ESG and some exciting developments in the pipeline. ESG is central to Anglo Gold Ashanti's global approach. We've published our inaugural climate change report, which highlights the way we're dealing with climate risk and the measures we're taking to strengthen the climate resilience of our, of our business, our value chain partners, and our host communities. <coughs> Anglo Gold set its first decarbonisation targets in 2008, with a 30% reduction in emissions intensity by 2022, and we've exceeded that goal. The picture on absolute emissions is even better. Those are down 69% from the base set in 2007. Now these reductions are due to changes in our asset mix, as well as from energy efficiency and fuel switching projects, such as the uh, conversion to gas-fired, um, gas-powered uh, generation at um, both Sunrise Dam and Tropicana. But we do know there's more to do. The company is in the advanced stages of developing its 2030 decarbonisation targets and we expect to release this strategy very soon. The Australian operations will play a critical role in reducing the company's carbon emissions and we're currently in the final stages of the project work to introduce hybrid wind and solar generation at both our sites in Western Australia. There's potential to reduce carbon emissions by approximately 40% and we hope to be in a position to announce more details in the very near future. Now the E and ESG has been high profile in, in our industry um, for some little time now, but Anglo Gold Ashanti uh, also remains heavily committed to its social investment through support for local communities globally. In Australia, we're proud of the business partnerships that we and our Aboriginal business partners have nurtured over more than two decades. I talked earlier about Kerry Mining being awarded the mining contract at Golden Delicious. Now that contract had its, had its roots in a continuous business partnership that began more than 26 years ago when Sunrise Dam started up and Kerry was a joint venture participant in the open pit mining contract. Since that time, Kerry has grown to become Australia's largest private, 100% Aboriginal owned mining and civil contractor. The partnership was extended through a contract at Trap Tropicana where Anglo Gold, Kerry and McMahon Holdings established the Get Into Mining training program for Aboriginal people in 2017. We're currently in the final stages of preparing for the eighth intake of participants who will start their eight week training program in September. Successful applicants from this course move into jobs with Kerry, McMahon or Anglo Gold. We now spend almost 70 million annually with Indigenous suppliers including Kerry and Cairo. 
Sisters Rowena Leslie and Katrina Stubbs, pictured in the uh, larger photo, are the driving force behind this 100% Aboriginal-owned contracting company, which has held the Dayworks Services contract at Tropicana since 2018. <coughs> Their parents' company, Bandara, was one of the original Aboriginal-owned businesses to start at Tropicana when the, when the operation commenced. Long-term partnerships are the key to our community approach not just in supporting the growth of Indigenous businesses, but in our support for education and youth engagement in the goldfields, through the schools, the academies, for health and wellbeing, and arts and culture. So in summing up, uh, Anglo Gold is focused on delivering sustainable cash flow improvements and returns. The building blocks are in place to support this, a clear, simplified operating structure, strengthened business units, an experienced leadership team and a strong balance sheet. We're taking the necessary steps to realise the full value of our global portfolio through the full asset potential process and ongoing investment to increase ore reserves and add mining flexibility. A particular emphasis been, has been placed on improving operating and capital efficiencies and delivering consistent results in line with targets. Our world-class exploration teams are aiming for another year of exceeding de depletion. The ramp-up of the Abwasi project in Ghana and the development of our Nevada project will add more ounces at a lower cost. We've reduced our carbon emissions by more than two-thirds over the past decade and will soon be publishing a new 2030 target for, <coughs> for further reductions and our Australian operations will play a key role in this. Finally, keeping people safe and well both physically and mentally, and supporting our com communities remains our top priority. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. We're, uh, we're bang on time, so we, we won't do any questions and we'll move straight into um, the next presentation.